So we were talking about the, the differences between cisplatin and, and doxorubicin. Right, so based on based on what we know right now, um, the doxorubicin you know, is, is definitely a very good drug, um, but you know, for my opinion, and I know that uh, other places, you know, big institutions, you know, consider cisplatin to really be the standard of care. Mm -hmm. You know, the big difference is it's not in the one year survival time, it's, it's more in the two year survival. So the difference is, that the, you know, 10% essentially, you know, from the literature, mm -hmm. but most of those dogs only got three doses of cisplatin, and nowadays we're recommending going as high as five if they can handle it. And from looking at human data, from looking at, you know, uh, cell culture studies, the more platinum drug they get, the better they do. So what I generally tell owners is that uh, the difference between doxo and cisplatin is not at the one year, but the two year, and it's, you know, at least a 10% improved survival or chance of making it there. Uh, technically, maybe a little bit better, you know. But a lot of owners, you know, given the cost of the cost difference, you know, where cisplatin is almost twice that of Doxo, it's more technical to give. They're here all day versus they're here for an hour and a half. Uh, most dogs with cisplatin will have mild side effects for the first 48 hours, whereas you know, probably around 30% of dogs with Doxo don't have any side effects. A lot of owners will say, well, if it's really only a 10% difference at two years. I don't really want to take that chance, or I don't want to really spend that extra money. Mm -hmm. But then you have the flip side where owners say, well, if there's anything that's better than Doxo, well, that's what we want to do. What would those side effects be to look for in the two different drugs? Uh, well, the most common side effects that we see with any chemo drug is really intestinal and then lethargy. So usually what happens with something like the doxorubicin, um, because there's a natural reserve in the body, Generally, we don't, wouldn't expect to see any problems for at least three or four days. Mm -hmm. But right around day four, day five, that's usually when it kicks in, and it's the same in people. Um, so what happens with the Docs Ruberson guys is right around that time frame, the owners may wake up, find the dog a little lethargic. Uh, you know, Docs Ruberson can irritate the large bowel, so maybe a little mucusy, soft stools. Uh, they do nothing within 48 hours; it goes away. But you know, if it's significant, if it's affecting the dog, the owners are worried about it. Then they can give the dog an anti-diarrheal, mm -hmm. and generally, with that, within 24 hours, it goes away. Um, compare that to cisplatin. Usually, the big side effect with cisplatin is, as soon as we give it to them, they can become nauseous, and that's why we got to give them extra medications that day. Um, but then they go home. A lot of times, they will eat that first night, but then for the next couple of days. They either won't eat at all, or they're eating very little, and again, they're a little lethargic. You know, give them a little appetite stimulant, tincture time, you know, depending on the situation, the owner. Mm -hmm. It passes, and then we're good to go until we do it all again three weeks later down the road. But the problem with the cisplatin is that when they get sick, you know, um, you know what I generally tell owners is, likelihood of sick enough to end up in the hospital with cisplatin is 15%, whereas the doxorubicin, you know, 10% or less. So, you know, it, it's a different drug for sure, uh, cisplatin being the worst that we give a dog. But um, when a dog gets sick from cisplatin, the problem is is that cisplatin can actually hit them twice. So if they get the early nausea, you know, our attempts to eliminate it with all the meds we give them doesn't work. You know, and it's severe, they could end up in the hospital for the first three or four days, but then just like Dr. Ruberson, come day four, day five, now it directly affects their gut rather than it just irritating their brain centers. Now they're going to have another two or three days where they're sick. So they can really be in the hospital for five, six days in the extreme cases. Now, the last time we had that happen was years ago. But, you know, with the Docs of Ruberson, even if they do get sick enough to end up in the hospital, which is pretty rare, 24, 48 hours tops, you know, full recovery, they're good to go. We take some extra precautions down the road and generally it doesn't ever happen again. Mm -hmm.